Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf, Kedush and Lamed Aleph. We are holding at the last line on Lamed Amad Beis, Tanya Rabbi Aymer, right in the middle of the sugya of Kibud of Vaim. Tanya Rabbi Aymer, Gol Yodua, it is revealed and known to Hashem. Lifnei mi she'amar v'hoya o'ylam before Hashem, who created the world. Hashem knows that a son, she'ben mechabedes imo yoyser mi of if he tends to... Uh, like and respect his mother more than his father. So in that sense he gravitates more to his mother. You know why? Because you know, she's soft speaking to him. So he tends to gravitate to her. So since naturally he tends to respect his mother more, so Hashem went and stressed and emphasized in the Torah that when it comes to respect and honor don't neglect father. In the, in the Pasuk, we find that Hashem refers to kibud of the father before the mother. Kibud av li kibud aim. It says, kabed es avicha. First avicha, because that's the, that's the difficult part. Kabed es avicha, and then ve es imecha. And likewise, when it comes to yira, moira, awe, uh, in that sense, a person naturally tends to relate that way to his father more than his mother. And therefore the Torah had to emphasize that it applies to mother as well. Take care in the way you refer to your mother and relate to your mother with proper moira. And likewise, it is known to Hashem Shabbain Misiyare Mi'aviv Yisr Mi'ima when it comes to uh, you know, fear, the fear element, it's more pertaining to father than mother, because he, he instructs him, he teach him, teaches him Torah, shows him the way, and that generates that, um, you know, sort of Moira relationship, and therefore the Torah had to go and emphasize and stress that, by the way, it applies to the mother as well. When it comes to the Moira element, the Torah first mentions mother, first mother and then father, in order to stress that there needs to be an element of you know, formality when it comes to the mother as well. Tani Tano, Kamed Rav Nachman, so this Chacham presented to Rav Nachman the following price. If a person acts with disrespect to his parents, you know, good thing I'm not living there amongst them. Because otherwise, if I were there, then this would really pain me. Because as we learned yesterday, there were three partners in creation of man, father and mother, and Kibud Av Aim is really a manifestation of Kavit to Hashem because they are the conduits. They are the um, representatives of Hashem to bring down this neshama. In fact, you know, the Ramban and Chumash explains why is it that Kibud Av Aim is, the, is within the first five of the Aserah Sadibrois, the first five which pertain to Ben Adam Lamokim between man and Hashem. Why is it sitting there? It should be in the second set which relate to bin Adam Lachavera between man and his fellow friends. So he says because Kibut Avim actually, even though it appears to be interpersonal, but really it's bin Adam Lamakim because one's parents are really, you know, they, they symbolize, they represent Hashem, the source of all life, the source of all chiyos. And this fits perfectly in with this Gemara that Hashem deems Kibut Avim and equates it to Kaved of himself. Amar Rav Yitzchak. So on the topic of Hashem's presence, says Rav Yitzchak, one must be careful. If a person violates an Aver, even, you know, Beseser, quietly, in a way where, where uh, it's not publicized, it's not revealed, but, but he thinks, he convinces himself that that's better than doing it, you know, in a way, you know, nobody's watching, it's okay. It's the wrong attitude. It's as though he's pushing away the legs, so to speak, of Hashem. Indicating that Hashem, you know, doesn't know what's going on down here. 
שנאמר, כיאמר השם, השמיים כסאי, וארץ הדויים רגלי, so down there in the ארץ, that's where I rest my feet, so to speak, I'm there just as much as upstairs, and wherever you are, I'm watching. אמר בשום בן לוי, אשר לא אדם שיהיה הלך, ארבע אמריס בכל מוז הקופה, one must take care not to walk very upright in a haughty way, in a way that you can't like see your, uh, you know, you can't see the ground below as you're walking because you're so upright and standing straight. So that's an expression of gava. Shanamar meloi kol aritz kivoyday, Hashem's presence is all over. And one must relate to that presence with proper respect and submission. Ravuna Breda Rishua, Lay Maske, Arba Ames, Begili Horesh. You would take care not to walk four Ames with an exposed head without a Yalmaka. Omar, he says, Look, Shrina, Lamalam Horesh, there's something above my head, the Shrina, and a, a, a Yalmaka, which by the way is a combined word. Yare Malka, it denotes fear of Hashem and Hashem's presence. There's something above me, look, there's something on my head that symbolizes the Shrina, which is above us. And we're under his presence and his control. Shal ben Almona. Okay, back to Kibud Avaim. So there was a, an Almona whose son asked a Shaila, Shal ben Almona Achas. So this, uh, this fellow had lost his father. And he asked, Esra ben Lezer, Abba, Oymar Ashkeni Maim. Let's say I've run into a situation, they didn't know that he was a, a Yasin, right? So he says to Rabbi Lezer, What if my father asks me to serve him water? At that same moment, my mother asks me the same thing. Please serve me a glass of water. Which one do I serve? Amalis, he says, look, very simple. We learned this yesterday, right? The mother is also bound to respecting his father. So first comes the father, he takes priority, and then the mother. Set aside, you know, for the moment, your mother's honor. And serve your father. Because both yourself and your mother, are bound to your father. So that comes first. So the same fellow came to Rishua with the same question. And Rishua responded likewise, uh, an identical answer as Rabbi Lezer did. So the child went further. He says, Rabbi, well, I have another question. What if uh, the, uh, my mother divorces? So now she's not really bound to respecting my father. What happens now? How do I deal with that, you know, conflict? Now he took a closer look at the at the Yasim and he noticed that he was missing some of his eyebrows, which indicated that he was, you know, he must have gone through a hard time and cried. Amalie he says, says, look, between your uh, eyebrows, I can tell Nikar Shabbat Amona Atta that your father passed away. Uh, so basically. Uh, you, you, it's not really a question that pertains to you. You have no father. But but in general, if one is faced with this type of dilemma, just you know, pour some water in a bucket, the kakelem and say, bup, bup, like calling your chickens, and sort of let them fight it out. Uh, you're equally responsible, right? You're equally obligated to respect your father and your mother in a case where they're not married. So then, just sort of, it's a toss up. Dorash Ula Rabba, so Ula Rabba presented the following drasha Pischa de Benesia at the entranceway to the uh, house of the Nasi. A uh, drasha which pertains to Kibbut of Aim. Maidachsev, what does the Pasuk in Tehillim mean when it says, Yeducha Hashem Malkal Malchi Aretz? All the uh, kings out there are going to praise you and acknowledge you. Kishamu Imre Picha because. They heard the words of your mouth, so to speak. This was by the Aserah Sadibris. Ma'amar picha, ma'amar is a singular, lashen yachid, lo'y ne'amar. Rather than speaking about a singular, relating to a singular, uh, you know, one single lesson that you taught them, th that's not what triggered their response, their positive response. Ela imre picha, something more than just one. What is that? There's a whole story behind this. Bisha sh'amar kadosh baruchu, anoichid. When Hashem began the Aserah Sadibris, I am your God, will yeh l'cha, nobody else. So the other nation says, well, uh, they had no idea, right? So, they have no clue what's going on. Ah, Hashem is just promoting himself, right? But once he went on and he spoke about honoring parents, so it wasn't all about himself. It was about doing the right thing. Oh, once they heard that, they were impressed. 
Ulema Amores are showing us to change their attitude regarding the first uh, Dibras as well, and they responded positively to all. Rav Amami I have another source to this idea that because of the later Dibras, they, um, you know, the 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 uh, the uh, Ilam were, uh, uh, you know, uh, had a proper attitude and, and changed their attitude to Hashem. Rav Amar Mihacha, Rosh Devarcha Emes. So the beginning is also a pasuk in Tehillim Kafutes. So the initiation of of your words are true. What does that mean? Rosh Devarcha, Veloy Soif Devarcha. Only the beginning and not the end. Ella. Again, the same idea. Because of the end, they acknowledge the beginning. Ella Mesoif Devarcha. Nikar Shereish Devarcha Emes. Because of the later Debris. Kibudav Aim, etc. Where we see that Hashem. Um, Looks after the interest of the of the parents and you know all the other other mechaveres as well. So that brought them to acknowledge and to accept the first debris as well. So the following question was posed to Rav Huna: How much? How far does kibud of aim go? Ad heichon kibud of aim. To what extent? Amar he says like this: I'm going to give you a really extreme example to learn from. Go take a look. There was a guy living in Ashkelon with Dama ben Nasina Shema, who was called Dama ben Nasina. Pamachas, it all happens. That one day, Bikshu Chachamim Parkimatio B'Shishim Ribu. Sacher, the Chachamim came to him with a a grand business deal, merchandise which would have earned him uh, sixty Ribu. Ribu is ten thousand. So sixty times six hundred thousand dollars, whatever, he could have earned on selling that merchandise. A grand offer. But it would have involved disturbing his father's sleep. The key for this uh, merchandise was under his father, uh, Tesis says his father's legs were over the chest with the, with the key. So either under his shoulders, under his legs, bottom line is he was sleeping over the key of and the, uh, the son was so loyal to him, did not want to wake him up, and he lost the deal. That's a uh, mysterious nefesh for Kibbut Aveim. Amar Vidam Hashemol, Shal Shabbat same question, post Shabbat Lezer, Ad Heichan Kibbut Aveim, how far do you go? Amar Lahem, he gave him a similar story with the same man. So Uru'u Ma'asso Ev Gechav Mechad Lavim Ba'ashkulayim. Look at this man who lived in Ashkelon, whose name was Dama ben Asina, right? But Dama ben Asina Shemoi. This happened a different time. Bikshu mimenu chachamim avanim la'efoid. Or perhaps it's the same story with a different version. Bottom line is, the chachamim came to him with an offer. He must have had a very precious stone, which would have perfectly matched the stone that, were, that they were missing for the ephod of the Kohen Gadol. B'shishim ribu yisachar, he could have made a, a killing on it. Rav Kahana Masni b'shemayni ribu eighty times ten thousand, basically a major deal. Voyim afteich munach tachas min rashi shalav. The key was by his father. Vulei tziray, he didn't wake him up, so he lost the deal. L'shana acheres that next year, nos non leyakadish baruch shchari. Hashem paid him off. Hashem reciprocated for the kibud of aim, because even goyim seem to have an element of kibud of aim because achiv because you know, it's really something logical and rational. So even Goyim are really bound to it. We know that Esau was very big in Kibbut Aveim. So bottom line is, he was Mekayim, this uh, great thing, and Hashem paid him back in this world. So the uh, the coming year, Hashem paid him back. Suddenly a red heifer was born in his herd, perfect for the Paraduma, which was a rarity and very, very precious and expensive. So Chacham came to visit to... Um, Offer him a deal for the Paraduma. Omar Lam, he says, Look, I know that I can really take advantage of you. I can ask a ton. I ask for any any amount. You're forced to give it to me. I can really take advantage. Hello, but you know what? I'll be fair. I only want payback for that mitzvah. That's a guy. He wants to get paid back for the mitzvah, for the uh, potential profit that he lost last year when he was protecting his father. I want that amount of money, Shif Sadi, which I lost. See his choice of words? That I lost. He looked at it as a loss, not as a, you know, 
as a gain, as a privilege, as an honor. I lost money on my father. Because of my father. Okay, interesting story, which uh, really takes it to uh, new bounds. Look, a guy is not mutzav v'aisa. He's not bound, he's not commanded. And still v'aisa is doing kach. Kach, we see that Hashem pays him back to this extent. Certainly, of course, a yid who is mitzuva, who is commanded v'aisa and fulfills Allah has come of a kama, certainly, of course, Hashem will pay him back in a grand way. Because it's actually more difficult to, to fulfill mitzvahs which we are meant to do. You know, when you just volunteer and offer, it's uh, relatively easy. There isn't much to her against you. But when you're meant to do it, you have no choice. You're bound to it. Then it gets difficult. One who fulfills mitzvahs, which he's commanded to do, stands higher and greater on a higher level rather than a person who just does voluntarily. On that topic, Amar of Yosef, or Yosef who was blind, says like this: Meresh, initially, way back, Havamina, I was thinking, Mandava Amarli. Whoever would tell me that Allah Yudah, that the Allah follows Rabbi Yudah, the Amar who says, Summa, one who is blind and has a difficult, you know, time functioning, he is part of mitzvahs. He's really part of from mitzvahs. So, really, I who am blind, says Rabbi Yosef, I'm really part of, but I still go ahead and I do anyways. So that's a great thing that I do it even though I'm potter. Avidna yoyim matavad rabbonam. So whoever tells me that I'm really potter, though he passed on to read that I'm potter and I'm still doing it, so that uh, gets me really happy. And I'll make a, a, a celebration, a yoyim tev for the rabbonam, because of this uh, simcha that I have, that I do, even though I don't, I don't have to. But now, but the whole life of a kid, now because although I'm not commanded, but I did not do anyway, so it's reason for celebration. That's what I thought. Because he thought that you know, one who does even without tzivu stands higher. Look, he's not even commanded. He's not even obligated. He's doing it anyways out of love, out of that's even a high level. But no, no, no. Then he changed his attitude. But now that I heard what Rabbi Chanina teaches us that. It's just the opposite. It's actually a greater challenge when you're meant to, when you have to do it. It's greater and more challenging and more difficult to do it when you're uh, So now it changed my whole perspective. Other of just the opposite. I wish I were commanded. Whoever comes and tells me, we don't adopt Rabbi Yudah's approach. Rather, we hold that even a summa, a blind man, must do mitzvahs, has the same obligations. So, if that's the case, then I'll be happy and really celebrate. Because it turns out that I'm really obligated and I do, so I get the greater level of fulfillment. Then I'll celebrate with the Chachamim. Kiyos Ravdimi, when Ravdimi came, he told us another aspect, another twist in Dama Benasina's. Fulfillment of Kibbutz of Aim. Omar, he says, Pamachas Hoyelovish. It so happens that one day he was wearing this very grand robe, Sirkain Shel Zahav, a garment made with golden weave. Very royal looking article of clothing. He was sitting amongst the important people in Rome, Ubasa Imoy, and this Damas Benasina's fellow. His mother came along. Apparently, she was either very mad or slightly deranged. She ripped the baggage off him and she hit him over the head. And she spit it in the face. Held back, he did not respond, did not embarrass her. Tony Avimi prayed Rabbi Avo. So, Avimi, the son of Avo, teaches us an interesting concept. It's not about, it's not just about actions, it's about attitude. It's about presentation. It's about how you make your parents feel, you know, when you serve them. Do you make them feel good or guilty? Yesh mach la'aviv pasyuni. Pasyuni is a sort of a gourmet food. Rashi says it's a... Actually, uh, yeah, it's an oif. Oif shchosha v'sham. Some sort of uh, gourmet, um, you know... 
Oh, yeah, for some uh, very fatty uh, bird. Rashi says it actually is the uh, from the Slav family, which uh, came down in the Midbar, right? So he feeds them really grand food. But this actually um, generates uh, uh, an oinish, a grand punishment for this son. Destroys his oilam uh, Why? Because, yeah, he serves him the uh, best foods, but with a sour face. On the other hand, you know, sometimes money is scarce, parnasa is difficult, and you know, the, the, the father has to contribute to the parnasa. The sons uh, explain to him in uh, you know, a nice way, look, we're, we're, uh, we're making, you know, hard time making ends meet, and uh, we need you to contribute to the family's income. Please, here, uh, you know, there's a millstone, let's, uh, let's grind some, right? So he's getting him working and grinding the millstones, but he's doing it in a pleasant, respectful way. Umavioi, lechaye, hoilom and this brings him to schar in hoilom It's all about the attitude, it's all about the presentation and sensitivity. Amar Abiyavu. The next story highlights the fact that even even great people, even Talmud Chachamim, were uh, heavily engaged in Kibbut Avayim. Amar Rabbi Avu, Kigoyin, I'll give an example of really properly fulfilled Kibbut Avayim. Avimi Bri, my son Avimi, Kiyim Mitzvahs Kibbut. He really fulfilled the mitzvah of Kibbut Av properly. What was the story? Chamisha Bnei Smichi, so Avimi um, had five very very prominent sons, all with you know with uh, uh, rabbinic ordination, smicha, right? Great So although he had a house full of you know people and kids, but he took personal interest in his father. When his father would come visit Kariya Baba, he would call at the door, oh, I'll come here. And his son, Avimi, this big Talmud Chacham with children at his uh, beck and call, Roy Vazl, he would himself run, run, to open the door for his father, Baba, and he would, as he was going, he would say, in, in, I'm coming, I'm coming, Adam Atoyasam, until he actually arrived at the door to let him know, to give him a heads up that he's coming. In fact, one day, Amrli Ashkai and Maya, so Rabbi asked his son, Roy Avimi, to serve him water. At the icy lady, by the time he came back with the water, Nimnaim, the father had dozed off. Gachin, Koyale, so Ravimi stood there, leaning over there and waiting and waiting. Adi Atar until his father woke up, so he has it at the ready without a moment's delay. So because of that extra effort for Kibud of Aim, at that very moment, he merited a special heavenly assistance. Istai Milsi Yatziata Dishmaya Vidara Shavimi and Avimi gained instant clarity in the Pasik. In the uh, actually in the Perik and Tehillim Mizmor La'asaf, which uh, would not have come to him otherwise, he got that special clarity and Siyat Hashemayim because of the mitzvah of Kibud Avim. Amalei Rav Yaakov Bar Avol I have a question. Look, look what happens to me. The Ado Sinim Beirav. I'm very favored by my parents. When I come back from the Bes Medrash, from the Yeshiva, my parents are. At my beck and call, they come and they serve me. Abba Madli Kasa. My father comes with the glass of Ima Mazgali and my mother pours. What should I do? <laughs> I didn't ask them to. Uh, you know, they, they favor me, they like me, they come and they serve me. Hey, how do I respond? How do I deal with it? Amar Lais, he says, look, my Imcha Kabil, except your mother's, you know, be Makabal from your mother. It's giving her Nachas, she likes serving you, Umeavuch, like to Kabul, but not from your father. You know why? It might make him feel bad. The Kivan, the Bar because he's a Bar Torah, Tamut Chacham Chol it might make him feel bad, the fact that he's serving you. So your father, your mother allowed, but not your father. Rabbi Tarfan was also very great in Kibbut of Aim. Havale he had an older mother. They call Aimas Davas Boya Lemesak Lepuri. Whenever she wanted to, you know, climb up to her bed, Gochen, Rabbi Tarfan would actually bend down and serve it like a stool. The Sulk La, and she would climb on him onto her bed. And the same on the way down. And when she would want to leave the bed, he would, she would step on him, on his back, and come off. So one day he came to this marriage and he highlighted the story and this fact to teach them, you know, how far Kibbutz goes. Amr they responded to him, no. The Chacham said, 
you're still not at the peak. Adain lo higata le chatzi kibud. You know, you're not even at the halfway point of kibud aveim. Klum, tell us. Klum zarka. Did she ever toss away your wallet? Klum zarka arneki befanecha. She threw away your money pouch in front of you, liyam, straight into the sea, v'loyich limasa, without you embarrassing her. Basically, you know, that's the true test. But until then, you're, you're very far. Rav Yosef, ki shama. When Rav Yosef would hear Kal, Kara the ime, the sound of his mother's feet, his mother's footsteps. Omar, he would say, "I gotta get up." Eikum mikam shchina da I want to get up. The shchina is coming because, as we learned earlier, the shchina is sort of embedded in one's parents. They represent the concept of shchina, and Hashem being the source of life. So he related to his mother in that respect. Omar Rabbi Yechna, Asher Mishalei Chaman. You know. Properly fulfilling this mitzvah is very difficult, and fortunate is the person who Hashem arranges that he shouldn't ever see his parents, because it's so difficult to fulfill properly. In fact, Rabbi Yechon himself experienced that he didn't see his parents. Rabbi Yechon ki brasi when his mother was carrying him, was pregnant with him. Meis of him at that point, his father died before he was born, so he never saw his father. He'll say as soon as his mother gave birth, meis his mother passed away, so he never had the experience of kibbutz aveim. I never was presented with this challenge. The same thing happened to Abai. He was a Yasin from both sides. Aini, is that true? But Amr Abai, Abai says, Amrli Aim. Many times Abai quotes Aim. Sounds like his mother taught him. Hahi Marabinise Havai. It was a stepmother who raised him. It wasn't his real mother. So here's a story with Ravasi. Havalei Hai Imo. He had a mother, Zakena, an elder, an older mother. She tells him, look, I'd like some my jewelry. She procured the jewelry for her. She continued with the next request. But you know, Gavra, I want to uh, please find me a shidduch, a man. He says, okay, I'll look into it for you. Then she insisted further. She was very um, particular. But you know, Gavra, I want a man to shop a kavasach who uh, is attractive looking like you. So now he realizes she must have been a little bit... Uh, uh, lost her mind. Shavka v'azlar di Yisrael. So he went and traveled to Yisrael to avoid dealing with her, you know, with this uh, difficulty. Shama the ka'azlar v'asrei. So then he gets word that she's following him to Yisrael. Azlar k'med Rabbi Yechonan. So Rabbi Asi went and asked Rabbi Yechonan. Amar lei, he says like this. Ma'o lotzeis me'eretz nechutz la'aretz. You know, I'm here at Yisrael. Can I leave at Yisrael to go greet my mother? Who's coming? Amar lei, he says you can't. He didn't explain to Rabbi Yechonan why he was leaving. So then he asked him, well, Likras Ima, I'm trying to greet my mother. Ma, what is the Allah there? Amale, he says, any day, I'm not sure. Asrach Portis, he waited a little while, came back to Rabbi Yechon again. Hadar also came back with the same question. Amale, so Rabbi Yechon responded a little, you know, uh, abruptly. He says, uh, Asi, he called him Asi. Asi, and the Lot says, you know, you're really insisting on leaving? Fine, so go. If you really want to leave, you can go. Hamokram, and he gave him a bracha, Hashem, should bring you back in peace. Hamokram, Yachzir Chalashalim. So, so Rabasi was concerned that he got Rabbi Yechon upset at him. Asal kameid Rabbi Lezer, who came to Rabbi Lezer, apparently was a tam to Rabbi Yechon for advice. Amalei, he says to Rabbi Lezer, you know, I wonder what I did to Rabbi Yechon. Chas v'sholim, I'm concerned that perhaps Zilma mirtach rotach, maybe I got him upset at me because I suggested that I leave Eretz Yisrael. And Amalei, so Rabbi Lezer asks him, my Amalech, you know, how did Rabbi Yechon respond to you the last time? Amalei, he says, well, he told me, uh, actually, I'm mokam yachzir chalashalim, he gave me a bracha. Amalei says, okay, that's a good sign. He said, the rasa, because if he was really mad, lo yavam avarach, he would never have given you the bracha, you're good to go. So he left there to Yisrael, en route to greeting his mother, the achi v'achi. By the time this happened, the shama, he heard that his mother passed away, la aroina, that her cough in the ka'asi, is being delivered to Yisrael. Amar, so now he felt bad. He said, Yadi, if I would have realized that in any case I won't greet her, I would never have left Eretz Yisrael. Tanar Abonon, Mechabdoi Bechayov and Mechabdoi Bechayov. So Kibbutz Aim extends past lifetime. You do Kibbutz during their lifetime. But there's an element of honoring one's parents even after their death. Now, Bechayov, Ketzad. Let's have an example of Kibbutz of Aim during a lifetime. So, suppose he knows that you know, in a certain village, they really respect his father. Hanishma b'dvar aviv l'makim. In this place, in this makim, you know, reference to his father, dvar aviv, can really elicit positive responses and cooperation. So now, you should employ that element and evoke your father's name and influence. 
in a show of respect to your father. Like you need your father, right? So lo yoyimah, rather than saying, shalchunu yibishvil atzmi, you know, send me off for myself. Marunu yibishvil atzmi, get me going quickly because of myself. Patrunu yibishvil atzmi, provide because of myself. No, relate to your father. Ela kulu yibishvil abba, say, you know, my father is such and such, please, you know, have respect for my father, take care of my needs. So that's during his lifetime. But Moisei Kesar, what about after his death? Here's an example. You're saying over, you know, a lesson, a halacha from your father. Rather than saying, Kach Amar Abba, you know, um, this is, uh, this is from my father. Kach Amar Abba Mori. You should add Mori, my father, my teacher. Harene Kaparas Mishkove. And add the following. Any any kapara that is meant to befall my father. This is during the twelve month period where the neshama gets its judgment, gets its oynish. That oynish should befall me, should come to me. I'm accepting the oynish instead of my father. Right, that only applies within twelve months of his passing. Past twelve months, the din is done. Oymer, all he says is, "My father, my teacher, the zichroi of blessed memory, the chayim above for eternal life." A teacher relates a halacha that his father taught him. Mishana Shem of Vishem Rabbi. He shouldn't directly relate um, his father's name or his Rebbe's name. Rather, he should say, um, you know, my father said it. My, my Rebbe. He shouldn't call them by name, right? Turgumon about the announcer. So the Chacham would give the drasha in such a loud voice. So he would whisper the words to the Turgumon, the fellow with the loud voice, who would go and um, you know, call out the words to the crowds. So the Turgumon on his side, when he relays the information to the public, he did not uh, make any changes in terms of his father or his Rebbe's name. Now, what does this mean? Avu Adaman, whose father are we speaking about? Who, who's, uh, whose father? The, the uh, teacher or the Maturgumon? Right, we're saying over a lesson, a halach in the name of father. Whose father? Is it the Maturgamon's father? So he did not change it? Of course, he, he can't call out his father's name in public. Isn't he not obligated as well? How could he ignore this, this mitzvah? Elam Rav rather was speaking like this. Shame of shall chacham, shall rabbi shall chacham, the chacham's father. Right? So he's relating a halacha or a lesson from his own father or his own rabbi. And when he whispers it to the Maturgamon, he should not actually mention his father or rabbi by name. Should obscure it, right? Should say my father, my rabbi. But then the Maturgamon has no reason to obscure it, so he'll publicize it properly. Kiha the Mabar Ravashi, like the story involving Mar, the son of Ravashi. When he would give his lecture, Ihu Amar, so he, meaning Mar, the son of Ravashi, when he would relate Allah from his father, he would not call it by name. Amar Abamari, he would tell the Turgamon, look, this is from my father, my teacher. But the Turgamon understood. That it's coming from Ravashi. Vamoiri and the Maturgaman Amar he would say Amar Ravashi. He would say it by name with clarity because he has no reason to obscure it. Okay, we'll continue on the topic of Kibbutz of Ebed Hashem tomorrow. So we started with the fact that Hashem made the effort to stress that Kavid relates to the father as well, not just the mother, and Moira to the mother as well, not just the father. Hashem is proud of. A son who's machabed his parents properly, it's as though I live with them and they respect in me. And conversely, when there's lack of respect, we learned about showing humility in the way in the way a person walks, in the way a person dresses, the yarmulke on one's head. The fact that even the Goyim acknowledged, based on the fact that they heard about Kibbutz of Aim, we heard about Dama ben Asina's many stories, extreme fulfillment of Kibbutz of Aim, the fact that one who has a mitzvah makes it more difficult, God of mitzvah it's all about presentation and attitude and sensitivity. We learned the many uh, examples and cases of the extreme fulfillment of Kibbutz of Aim. Rabbi Avimi, Rabbi Tarfan, Rabbi Yasef. And uh, we concluded with some examples of Kibbutz of Aim, even pertaining to relating to uh, a father's name. All the best to you and Atzlach Rabbi.